guys like the Ted bumpers? I do. I think we're going to keep them for a while, you know, because I just got, they always complain about me using their song for my theme, so I think we're going to keep uh, cocked, rocked, and ready to rock the Glock Dock, okay? That's how we're going to open the show from now on. I've got personal permission from Ted himself to use all his music anytime I want. So there you go, ASCAP. What do you think about that? I'm J.D. Smith. We're back on the Article 5 Hour, and welcome to it. Thank you for being here and sharing part of your Sunday afternoon here with us. And we're on Independent Talk 1100 KFNX and the World Wide Web via my page, the Article 5, the Article 5 Hour on Facebook. It's the only thing running right now because I have a dead laptop. And so, like I say, it's live radio without a net. There's there's perfect evidence of that right there. So anyway, welcome back. I want to talk about gun control. I want to talk about red flag laws. I want to talk about the Second Amendment community's uh, narrow-minded reaction to what the president is up to. Now, it's scary what Trump is doing with this question of red flag laws. It freaks everybody out, okay? But as he's done twice before successfully, it is my opinion that what the president is doing is making the appearance of compliance with restricting the Second Amendment in order to expose the left for the gun-grabbing assholes that they are. That's what's going on. Now, it's hard to live through that. But as they take the bait, guys, it should be a little bit easier. So I wish my good friends in the single issue 2A community would just for a second take consideration of what's really going on. Now, there's some people that genuinely distrust President Trump on this issue because of things like an, an, an executive order that can't be defended by the Supreme Court to take away bump stocks. For instance, did you notice what I put in there? Because it, there is a challenge underway on the executive order in, uh, banning bump stocks. Because that is property we people in this country purchased. The government has no right to take that property without compensation. That is unconstitutional. So the loophole is they made you destroy it. If you get caught with it, now you're a criminal. That's not constitutional either. <laughs> so, the one thing that Trump has done to rile the 2A community, the real thing that he's done, is going to not stand in a court of law once it gets there. So, I would back off. I think that he's playing a dangerous game, and he will be successful in exposing the left for their real purpose. Uh... You know, all this emphasis on the El Paso shooter because he was a white supremacist or something like that, which he said he was, his sentiments towards anti-Mexican, being anti-Mexican preceded Donald Trump. He said that himself in his own manifesto. A lot of people say he didn't write that, all that stuff. Conspiracy theories about that abound. But I don't see these same leftist assholes even, pardon my language, but that's what they are, concerned about the safety of the people of Chicago, for instance, or concerned when massive amounts of people die by the knife blade. You don't hear a word about that. What was it, eight people got killed in California last week by a, 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 ramp, a guy with a knife on a rampage? You can kill somebody with just about anything if you have murder in your heart. Like I said last week, you want to end mass murder, you got to ban human beings. Because guess what? Throughout the history of this planet, human beings have been killing each other with whatever means necessary. Now one would argue a gun makes it a little bit more uh, efficient to kill a lot of people. And if you have murder in your heart, that may be true. But you know what? If you armed more people, less people would get away with that. The answer is more training, 
more firearms and more people carrying firearms. That is the answer. That's why we're doing it in our schools in most places right now. We're arming either uh, off-duty police officers, military, or even teachers in some cases. We're arming these people because the way to stop a bad person with a gun is a good person with a gun. And any other way of trying to stop it is not going to stop it. And then, you know, it's everybody says men, mental health, mental health. You know, the president had a 36-minute impromptu press conference on his way on to Air Force One today, and he said, you know, I remember when they closed all the insane asylums and dumped all those people out on the streets. Yeah, guess who did that? It was the left. Because they wanted to protect the rights of the insane. That's what happened. Crazy stuff, you guys. And I think <clears throat> I think that we absolutely have to keep these things in perspective, keep our heads cool about it, and not get too excited about quote-unquote red flag laws. In the state of Arizona, we already have laws on the books that do what they claim they want red flag laws to do. Do you know that? So, what I what I what I want you to consider is the whole picture. You've got idiots like Anthony Scaramucci out there trying to torpedo the president's chances of re-election for what? So we can put in Elizabeth Warren? Come on, Anthony! What is it with these freaking New Yorkers that want to stick the knife in? Is it a trend? Jennifer, you're from New York. Hey. Is it part of the culture over there or what? <laughs> could be, could be. I don't know. Anyway, it's uh, it's really, it's really uh, unfortunate. Let's just put it that way. Uh, Anthony wasn't getting enough attention. So he's got it now. He's got all kinds of it. He's the new media darling because he said bad things about the president. <laughs> God, anybody can't see through that. You might as well be talking about the Epstein suicide. Nobody, nobody can see through that one either, idiot media. I mean, think of the astronomical odds for all the conditions of the Epstein death to be a suicide. You'd have to have the camera fail. You'd have to have a guard that's never been there before. You'd have to have the inmate removed. You'd have to have the guard sleeping or going home, whichever the case may be, all lining up in perfect order just so uh, Mr. Epstein could do the near impossible fault of breaking that bone by himself with tearaway sheets inside of a shell, uh, cell that has no way to hang yourself in. And, and... You have all the idiots on Fox News pushing that narrative down our throats. And well, I don't even mention the other ones because they're not worth it. But that's what's happening. And it's, it's the reason why I'm going to ask this network to add One America News, just like DirecTV has. Okay, did you guys catch that? Call Dish and ask them to put on One America News. And if you're not watching Newsmax, you should be. Now, there's people on Fox to watch. Mark Levin, Sean Hannity, Laura Ingram, uh, Tucker Carlson. These people you can still listen to. But the rest of Fox News is nothing but garbage, you guys. And you got to get off of it. They're feeding you the same tripe as the other stations are. Not the truth. So, let's not be fooled by the fakers, the posers. Uh, after after the news, we're going to have we're scheduled to have Steve Ronovec on it on the program, and he's an angel dad. His son was murdered by an insane illegal alien that shouldn't have had a firearm, shouldn't have been in this country. If if I'm not mistaken, he was deported several times, and 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 this isn't the first time that he's committed a crime in this country. No amount of gun laws is going to prevent that sort of thing from happening. The only thing that's going to ha prevent that is we enforcing our own border laws. So, 
Hopefully we'll get Steve on the line after the news. He's also running for Congress in District 3, challenging that fat, slob, drunk, Raul Grijalva. If you don't know who uh, District 3 is, that's Tucson, you guys. The crazy ass is down there. Anyway, we'll be back after the news on the Article 5 Hour, hopefully with Mr. Steve Ronabek. And we have Jennifer Harrison in the studio. She'll have the Harrison report in the last segment. We'll be right back. I, I think Steve is scheduled for next weekend, no? No. <laughs> no. You were supposed to schedule for today. No, I think he said he couldn't do it this weekend. It had to be next weekend. That's all right. We'll wing it. Okay, we'll wing it. If you look through, I don't know if you say text messages, but if you look through, did I send you like a? Uh, it was going to be this Sunday. Oh, my bad. I'll go over that. You're fired. I'll have to look back. You're not a producer. This radio program. I ain't no secretary. Okay. Producer is what that is. Why don't you try to People call don't realize yeah, he couldn't do it this weekend. He, was, he right wasn't now. available this weekend. Maybe maybe you have to sign up there. I scheduled him for next calls. Sunday. I've had other things going on <laughs> next Sunday. So maybe it might be a good idea to try to call him. I mean, text him at least. Tell him to hold on, guys. Sorry. Sorry, y'all. I started it a wee bit early, but... Okay, I'm going to give them a plug. So, uh, we had a little faux pas there. Okay, that's part of the course this week. Yeah, you had a busy week. I've had a super crazy busy week. I've been living in a... You've been on vacationing. No. I mean, I'm back and forth between my house and the freaking hotel. Because my ceiling fell in. Oh, shit. And I got a contract for coming <coughs> How's the ceiling falling? What happened? The water line in the attic. Oh, gosh. Change your life now. Right. Hang on, guys. I started this a skosh early. Alright, we'll wait. What are you doing? Just listening. Yeah, well, you've got ambient. Yeah, you got ambient. Oh, okay. Just checking the <laughs> Well, see, what happens is if you put those on, then he's going to put right. the mic on. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> got you. Got you. <laughs> Different than Stop when touching I did. stuff. I'm putting it back. <laughs> I'm putting it back the way it was. Realistically, you can hear exactly what's on it's the radio. It's a little, it's a little, it's a little better for my ears. Yeah, I know. Ditto. Um, yeah, I know. Unbelievable. I know. Unbelievable. I know. Yeah. You see the radio with Cardinal stuff. Exotic parts fun. and firearms wants to buy your gun. I One minute. One minute, y'all. Yeah, we did a podcast, but we were so busy we didn't have time to put it all together. And so by the time we got around to getting it together, everything we talked about was like old news and expired. Well, yeah. and that's one of the problems. <laughs> we got to do it live. We're doing that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's got to be a live it's in broadcast. the moment, yeah. Turn your high-quality guns into cash now. Four eight zero seven three four seven six one. We'll get it. 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 We'll get
you know, all over the state and the Tucson thing, green shirt guy, all this kind of stuff. She's been all over the nation with this stuff because Tucson decided to be very infamous and become a sanctuary city against the course. Well, it's on the ballot, so it's going to be put on the ballot. Oh, they voted to put it on the ballot. Yes. Okay. So, you know, we were, we were, you know, just passing through Tucson. Yeah. We were there for a couple of uh, unrelated um, issues. And so I looked on my calendar and saw that there was a city council meeting for the sanctuary issue. So we stopped in, uh, grabbed a couple signs at the Walmart on the way, wrote down what, you know, my message I wanted to say. And we went in there and the mayor, uh, Mayor uh, Rothschild, I've been to many city council meetings and they don't, they usually let all of the citizens speak or all of the, you know, people in attendance speak. So you fill out a common card, you hand it in to the mayor. The mayor hand selected three people that he would allow to speak and he discarded the rest of the cards. So if you know me, you know, I'm going to find a way to get my message out one way or the other. So if you deliberately you know, keep me from speaking, I'm going to get it out there. So the meeting was over. They put, they put the initiative on the ballot and we stood up. I made a comment, respect our laws, held up my sign. And there was a man in the front row. We didn't even notice him until after the story broke, but he was wearing an ugly green shirt. And behind him was angel grandmother, Laura Bursuto, holding up a photo of her grandson who had been killed in a sanctuary city. So she's holding up the photo. I've got my sign. Green shirt guy starts laughing. The news zoomed in on him. Next thing you know, it's gone viral. It's we're on the late show, the tonight show. Kathy Griffin is making uh, parodies about us. And it all came from this guy laughing at the fact that one, Americans are being killed by illegals. And two, there is no respect for our law. There was absolutely no respect for our law. The, the one city does not have the authority or the jurisdiction to change federal immigration law, to change or defy federal immigration law. Yes, indeed. And, you know, the, uh, the sticky legal business about it. But just like our, our new candidate, our Republican candidate for Arizona District 3, Steve Ronderbeck, you know, his boy was murdered at the QT. Right. Because he couldn't count this insane illegal aliens change fast enough. Fast enough. Right. Uh, that occurred less than a mile and a half from my house. Wow. And so, uh, you know, this is kind of personal to me, although. Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. Plus, you were, you did a, a film like two miles from my house with the DHS bus dropping off all the people from South uh, Central America there. Right, right. And, you know, so, <laughs> lest a one think it doesn't affect them, wait till it comes to your neighborhood, right. I guess is my Well, and, and they're fools. We were out there speaking to some of the people, some of the supporters, and we asked them, why do you want criminals, criminal illegal aliens, released into your community? Give me a reason why. No, yeah, and when it comes to the guy that, that murdered Steve's son, um, I didn't have a chance to do the research on him, but I think that he had been re deported. 20 years. He'd been living in this country illegally for 20 years. And the kicker on this story is that this is just going to trial now. And the judge will not allow that information to be presented by the prosecution. So the prosecution cannot mention the fact that he was an illegal alien living in this country illegally for 20 years. Also, the judge took the death penalty off the off the table. So they're claiming because he was an illegal with a fifth grade education that he was intellectually incapable of determining right from wrong. So now this sets a precedent of any other illegal that comes in here and thinks it's okay to rape your daughter. Or your shoot niece, your son. Or shoot your son. That, you know, they didn't know any better. They're from a poor country. Give me a break. This is a slap in the face to the Ronenbeck family. It's a slap in the face to every American citizen. Yes. Who we depend on our government mainly for one thing, and that's our safety and our security. My God. So, so you know, Steve is a personal friend of mine, and I would do anything to, um, you know, to, to stand by him. So I'm, I'm begging all of you, 
we need to stand behind Steve for his run for Congress against Cartel Grijalva. Because Grijalva is a whole other topic, but everybody needs to go to Steve's website, steveronenbeck.com. Donate $5, $10, $20, whatever you can give. Let's push Steve through this, through this race, and let's get him in office. Yes, and you Republicans and independents at District 3, I know you can hear us right. down there right now. Right. Because this radio station is heard very well in the city of Tucson and uh, the surrounding area. So, right. Steve Ronnebeck is com. running. SteveRonnebeck.com, that's R-O-N-N-E-B-E-C-K. So, that's how you spell it. And just Google it. You'll find it. Let's get Grahalba the drunk the hell out of District 3. Yes. Yes. So and and, and, that, and we'll, we'll hear from Steve maybe next week if next I can week. get him in. Next week. If I can get him in. Okay. So anyway. Uh, so Tucson, you know, the, the Pima County GOP filed a lawsuit against the, uh, I believe it was against like the recorder's office and the clerk, etc., for, um, you know, they, they, their argument was that there was um, some unconstitutional ways that the county determined how many signatures were required to get this initiative on the ballot. It was, you know, stricken down by the judge. So um, I'm not sure if we're going to appeal it, if they're going to appeal it. But, uh, you know, it, it's, it's most likely going to be put on the November ballot. So Tucson is the, uh, you know, the butt crack of Arizona. <laughs> it used to be the armpit, but it's, uh, it's now uh, downgraded to the butt crack. The butt crack of Arizona. And, uh, you know, it's the, you know, the, the poverty levels, the unemployment levels. This is all Grohava's district. And, you know, he's not doing anything to bring jobs in there. He's not doing anything to clean up his community except bus uh, you know, illegals in every day to, uh, you know, to, to replace you. The difficulty is getting the message out because there is so much disinformation disseminated from the media. Right. Good people believe things that are absolutely not true about what's going on. And our job is to stop that. I mean, there's hosts... There's a host on this radio station that blurts out absolute falsities thinking he's doing something that's right. Right. And, and, and so, you know, and the reason is is because the folks on the left and the unengaged, they live in an echo chamber. Absolutely. They never hear the other side of the story. Right. All they hear is what their side says about the other side. Exactly. People are so lazy to research their own information. Yeah. And they're just regurgitating the, uh, you know, the headlines that they're hearing on left-wing media. Which is why Fox and other outlets are still viable for information. Because what happens is, even though their news... I got quotes going there, reporting really slants to the left in most cases. Right. Their opinion shows show the other side quoting the quotes that right. that people need to hear. Okay, so if you just if you just watch Fox, you'd get both sides. But but if you watch CNN, MSNBC. Any of the other stations, the right. networks, you're not going to get both sides. So, and young people know this. They get their news other places. Unfortunate, right. sometimes from unfortunate places like Young Turks and, and, and absolute tripe like that. But, right. but they, at least they have a chance with the internet because they haven't been able to completely eliminate conservative speech yet from the internet. They're working on it, right. but they haven't been able to do it yet. And so... You know, that is the challenge for 2020. If the, if the American public is told the truth, Donald Trump wins 49 states. Absolutely. And if you notice, Trump's approval rating is going up with uh, Latino vote voters and, and, and African American uh, voters. Oh, so, absolutely. You know, they want to keep, Democrats want to keep Latinos and, and African Americans, anybody of color, that they want to keep them victims. Like I wrote in a meme 
earlier on Facebook, you know, the Democrats think you people of minority heritage are so stupid that you don't know how to get an ID so you can vote. <laughs> think about that for a minute. We'll be right back with Jennifer Harrison here on the Article 5 Hour right after these important messages from our sponsors. Please support the people that support this radio broadcast. We'll be right back. <laughs> I'm so pissed off, I can't even... <laughs> Is that after the show, Scoop? Huh? Is that after the show, Scoop? I don't know. <laughs> Unbelievable. Crazy, Arizona's crazy right now. What's up with all the backstabbing going around? <laughs> you, you've been backstabbed too. You said something about it. Yes, on Facebook. people are so funny. Anyone I know? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. oh God. That's after shows. Yeah. After shows. Yeah, yeah. We're on the thing here. Yeah, yeah. Forget. I forgot. Yeah, I know. But what's up with the backstabbing? People are phony, man. Nobody know, really knows, you know, what they stand for, or what they believe I in guess anymore. Not. You know, they you just know? flip flop around. Uh, you know, wherever I they. I think that happened in just my desperate, intimate circle as well. Desperate drama. Chocolate, 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 how do you say it? Chocolate. Chocolate. So anyway, I'm looking at this Hellcat. Nice. You gonna buy a Hellcat? <laughs> I might. What? I get pushed over the cliff one little bit more, I'm do buying it. a Hellcat. Do it. <laughs> Is it do a it. Challenger or a Charger? Challenger. Okay. Well, they they have that wide body coming out. I, I don't like the wide body. I, it's not me. Hey, Suave. That, I don't like it. Well, that's on hey, the, the uh, uh, Charger. I, I didn't say it. Was, well, it's also on the Challenger. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not buying a new one. I, can't, I ain't going to spend any grand. I can't for it. I know. I need, but I found I, one for under 40. Really? That's only got 22,000 nice. miles on What year? Six B, baby. Nice. 17. It has to be 17. I have a 15. For a Hellcat. No, it doesn't. 15. Yes, 15. Don't 15. 15 is the first year that I have a 15, yeah. Oh, gosh, it's been... I'm ready to dump really? it. It's starting to fall apart. I'm just, I'm really hard on the vehicles. shit out of it. Yes. So, my only hesitation with the Hellcat is, I don't know... Insurance? Not really. I'm damn near 60 years old. I don't give a shit about insurance. No. One minute. The, the, the um... The only thing that I don't know is my ignorance about the longevity of a supercharged engine. I don't know, because I'm going to probably drive the crap out of it. I pick a car okay? based on how cool I look wow. in it and how fast it goes and how loud it sounds. Yeah, but I'm not going to spend $40,000 on a vehicle that's going to last me three years. Right. You know, right. I'm not going to do it. Right. I'll, I'd rather get a 392. Because I know that will hold together. Just look on, just look on car the car talk. I'm going to do my like hot rod mile, talk on commercial. You know, Hellcats and stuff like that. And see if anybody's done reviews on them. When, once That's they exactly what I need to do. Yeah. Before I make my I don't even know what kind of supercharger they put on those, but you're right about the longevity. I don't know. It just depends about on how, how So much I don't know you if it affects it, it. You know, is it otherwise? Is it, is, is it a Hemi? Is it a supercharged Hemi? Because Hemi, all that means is they made everything thicker. Right. So it'll take take whatever you throw at it right. but it's probably now, not now on the upside when you put that car into, I love like, my into like, yes. like track mode it, it uh, your air conditioner shuts off and it reroutes the cool yeah. AC to the intercooler yeah the name of that tune is uncomfortably dumb now the Democrats don't know how dumb they are, so therefore they're not uncomfortable. It's only the people that have had enough crap that are starting to question why they are supporting the Democrats. And you know, these people are coming either into the independent or Republican camp in droves. Now, I'm not here to be a Republican cheer, cheerleader because God knows, uh, you know, 80% of the Republicans are just full of crap. There's no question about that, okay? And I was thinking about this the other day. Donald Trump is no Republican. Now, that's not news to you guys, I realize. But what Donald Trump really is, politically, if you can put him in a political, he would be what was used to be known as a blue dog Democrat. You think so? I think so. And you know what? He, he might have, I'm talking about throughout his political, right, right. Yeah, the way right. he's been acting his whole life, is mostly pragmatic 
And I heard a Blue Dog Democrat, the head of the Blue Dog Democrat today from New Jersey was on Fox News talking about it. And he agrees with everything we want to be done at the border. And he's a Democrat. And he's trying to garner, he's trying to move his party in that direction. So there are people that are Democrats that haven't completely gone insane and aren't totally ignorant. But you have to really dig to find those people. And the problem is the people that are traditional Democrats, they don't do their research. So they listen to the nut jobs in their party and they think what they're saying is true, Jen. That's right. That's right. So tell us what you've been up to other than the Tucson thing. What else is happening? Uh, well, we went to see the Elizabeth Warren Town Hall. Oh, yeah. And it was not a town hall. It was an Elizabeth Warren talk about herself rally. And it was advertised as a town hall with a Q&A. So we arrived uh, on scene in regular clothes. And then when we got inside, we revealed our MAGA hats. And you could cut the tension with the knife in the room. All eyes were on us. The media, the, the cameras just panned down to us. People are tweeting out, easy patriots are here. And, uh, you know, everybody was shouting out. We were shouting out. So, you know, they didn't like what we were shouting out. I, you know, they were talking about climate change and how we need to give the government so much more of our money because they're going to correct the climate change problem. So it's the big hoax. And so I screamed out, climate change is a hoax. And next thing you know, their security asked me to leave. We left peacefully. That's how we do it. And on our way out, there was this rabid, uh, you know, deranged TDS Warren supporter who uh, lunged at uh, my partner here and tried to grab his phone. And security pulled him out by his arms and legs, drug him out the entrance. And uh, he stood up, tried to come after me, tried to throw a, an arm fist at me. He got arrested. So, you know. So... Why don't you tell us what you gathered about what happened in Portland uh, also? Because I, I didn't follow that close because I'd been otherwise engaged. Portland, we from the videos we watched, I know a lot of them were pulled down, but this is the patriots of Portland trying to stand up to this tyrannical mayor who... Joe Biggs was up there, too. Who will let, you know, the savages run riot in the streets, attack citizens who are are exercising their First Amendment rights, getting hit in the head, stitches, bloody, the now that's grenades what being launched. Time. That's what happened last time. Right. It wasn't so bloody this time. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. The Patriots held it down. And uh, it's funny, just watching some of the CNN footage. So the CNN reporter is interviewing, uh, you know, one of the uh, head organizers for the Proud Boys, and, and he's just laying it down on her, putting her in her place, shooting down everything. And she's asking him, She's, they're, they're describing the scene and they say, the far right extremists are running in the streets protesting the anti-fascist demonstrators who are standing up against hate. And which is now, so funny too. Antifa is the hate. Antifa Absolutely. is the violence. And what's so funny about that char mischaracterization mm -hmm. is those guys aren't even right wingers. They're libertarians, for right. God's sake. Right. Well, they're <laughs> a mix. Know what the hell are talking they're a hot mix of everybody, you know. You know, everybody, you know, right of center is out there, standing up for the rule of law, most, most especially, I think. Yeah. Well, the right left paradigm is a media creation in order to divide us anyway, right. because right, left, or center, we agree. Normal people agree on eighty percent of things, and it's right. only the twenty percent of where we're going to spend all the taxpayers' money that we generally argue about, anyhow. Right, right, right. And so, uh, yeah. So th this is it's just a it's a, such a farce, man. It but is. But I was glad nobody got killed. Right. And they said they're going to keep coming back out there, and you know they're claiming that they're wasting city resources and et cetera, et cetera. But enforce your laws and shut down violent Antifa. Or the Patriots will continue to stand up for their rights. Well, what's sad to me is I look at the two million people in the streets of Hong Kong trying to stand up. Waving an American flag, by the way. Waving an American flag. And then you see the Antifa on this side waving the Communist China flag. So Yeah, yeah. and what I... Yeah, exactly. And my point with that is, too, that, you know, I wish most Americans had a one-thousandth of a passion 
for liberty and freedom as the people of Hong Kong do. Right. Because the bunch of spoiled brats out there won't get off your ass and do anything for this country. That's how we get idiots in Congress. Right. That's how we elect the enemy, like Rashida Tlaib and Alain Omar. Right. These people don't even belong in our country, let right. alone in our Congress, for God's sake. And did you see the president's tweet? Of course I did. Oh, it was glorious. What did he say? Oh, this is good for her grandmother. She doesn't have to see her anyway. Yes. I was like, yes, it's so savage. See, that's the thing that one of the reasons the left will lose right. is they have no sense of humor. No. They take themselves <laughs> way too seriously. And, and 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 our president can cut loose and crack a right. joke. Right. And he knows he's going to get criticism. And you know what he does? He gives him the big middle finger. And love, I love it. it. Love it. Yeah. So, so before we run out of time, I just want to give one quick shout out. Um, this afternoon, we were down in Tucson, uh, south of Tucson, uh, by Aravaca. And uh, we were at Tim Foley from Arizona Border Re Recon's place and he gave us a presentation of some of his trail cam footage showing the cartels the the drug smuggling routes the the water drops left for the cartels so this man has dedicated his entire life he is a true american badass patriot he's down there on his own time on his own dime everybody can go to uh, arizona border recon dot org Drop him ten bucks, twenty bucks, whatever you can Buy give. A t -shirt. We gotta help these guys, man. They're down on you the got front awesome lines. Olive Absolutely. Green t -shirt. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so also I would like to drop a plug for the uh, Free America Law Center, started by Robert Barnes. Seventeen dollars and seventy six cents a month makes you a member that are supporting groups that are being sued by the SPLC, such as AZ Patriots. So hopefully they will be able to take your case, Jen. I hope so. And if, in the meantime, paypal.me forward slash AZ Patriots if you want to contribute to the legal fund that the SPLC is after our good friends, the Arizona Patriots, AZ Patriots, who are out there on the front lines for you people who can't get out there, okay? That's what they're doing. And a great sacrifice of their own time and otherwise. So please support these good folks. Last words? Last words? Not last words, but I mean, <laughs> how would you like to close? Stand up, fight back. This is our time, America. We have to be bold. We have to be fearless. We have to take back this country. I agree. And I'd like you to support Bishop Ammunition and Firearms. The S P five hundred Futures Trading Group, eight seven seven eight seven 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 four six days. Dave Giles for Congress.com. Exotic parts and firearms. I'll be back next Sunday in 167 hours with another edition of the Article 5 Hour. Until then, God bless you and your family, and God bless America. And let's keep making America great again. I'm coming home, honey. Listen, <laughs> they cut out the word. I cut out fucking right here. <laughs> Listen. Answer the wake up call. Oh. That was a hard edit. You, you did that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because that's the way it's recorded. He says, answer the fucking wake up call. Good morning, America. Alright, that's enough of that shit. Thanks, All right, guys. Alright, y'all, it's a wrap. We will see you. Thanks for tuning in. AZ Patriots, um, like, follow this page. And uh, we are still in the, in the lawsuit. Um, I can give you an update as soon as we get one um, in the next couple of weeks. So um, we are still actively engaged in uh, defending this, this complaint against us. So any little bit helps. You can find that page, that donation page at uh, paypal.me forward slash azpatriots and uh, gofundme.com forward slash azpatriots. Which GoFundMe finally coughed up our uh, oh they get, our they money yes it. yeah 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 oh, they released oh, oh, it, so. that's a beautiful thing so all F two was reporting it all right guys we are out of here I am tired exhausted and I'm going Mama I'm coming home what is it honey I'm coming home I'm coming home I'm coming home that's not that's that's Bye, my guys. version of it.